Hi everyone, my name is Catherine. You can also use my shorter nickname Katie if you like. Um, and today I'm playing a game called A Raven Monologue. This game is a short experimental silent story about a raven that does not know how to croak and his relationship with the people in the town. The game's developer is called Mojiken and it is published by Tugab Productions. This game was released on January 12th in 2018. The copyrighted song in the beginning is composed by Christopher and Nora and the song is called Selfishness. By all means, do go and check it out. It gives this game a very nice atmosphere immediately from the beginning. However, I do not dare to use uh, music in this video because sources which shared the song didn't seem to give a clear permission to use it in a YouTube video. So I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I want to be respectful towards copyrighted material in my videos, so all you will be hearing <laughs> through this playthrough is my voice. So let's focus on the story and the visuals which by the way, look really lovely. And have fun experiencing this game together. Okay, so let's play a raven monologue. Yeah, so it looks like we are having two spaces here. Perhaps three if the cage is counted. Or it looks like we have the space outside. Another person outside, 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 yes, and the raven inside, looks like he's alone inside and he's staring at the cage. And there seems to be a rock in the cage, at least I think so. And the person outside seems to be... Yes, they are knocking the door. Let's see what happens next. Oh, they are offering a flower to the raven. And it's actually really interesting. They come from... The outside world, which looks like it's colorful. And the inside, the raven's world looks like it's black and white. So it's kind of like two very vastly different <laughs> color schemes meeting each other. That's cool. I really like that. I love it when games use the art style to stay to tell a story and it's also very visible that here you can see smile and and here facial expression is very neutral staying the same all the time at least in this image we are seeing right now so what happens we hear talk about flowers and I guess the raven wants to have those flowers but the hand is like physical trying to take the flowers off from the speech bubble mm. oh and and now the flowers are inside the cage with the stone. O okay, um, so we have a confined space. And actually what's interesting is that usually you see cages like this um, having, unfortunately, birds in them. So what is the symbolism of the raven who is bird staring at the cage and the stone inside it. 
I mean, both of these are natural materials, just um, vastly different from each other. Oh, <laughs> look at that. I love this art style. It's so beautiful. We can see water and, and the streets, uh, I guess city or town, in all its different layers. <laughs> and actually, what I notice now also is that everything else is kind of colorful, but our main character is not. They are still black and white, only thing colorful they are holding is the flower they received. Mm. Love it. So now they meet another person who is colorful as well, fitting to this world. They somehow do not seem to be. Well, they are part of it, but different also. And now they can use. I guess the concept or the language of flowers they learned to communicate with this dude. But still we see that the speech bubbles look very different from one another. And they are talking about different things. Okay. And by the way, this, it, it looks like a bridge. It's so beautiful. Love it. Really love it. Let's see what happens next. So here we have, I guess, another new word or new concept. And our raven wants to understand or acquire, learn this new thing. And now it's inside cage again. It's interesting, like, it seems like the visual way of telling this story really matters. I mean, you can see kind of the greenery and the flowers moving, but the stone stays still. Also, again, the colors, like brighter colors in black and white. Really interesting. And he continues the journey. Oh, this time it's a tree or branches, and they actually go also like outside the speech bubble. Now I cannot remember if the greenery went outside the speech bubble earlier. But I guess our raven is using now these two concepts to communicate with. So perhaps the raven is learning a third one here. <laughs> and now it's in the cage too. So all these three new things our main character has learned. Before there was just the stone, but now there's much more. Am I imagining it or are these I wonder if these are getting like more colorful. Perhaps I'm imagining it. Perhaps it's just the contrast between the main character and the background. Oh, but this is something new. What's this? Oh, wow. Look at how tall they, all of these trees are. It looks like they are forming almost a ceiling. 
look at all the details, like each pen stroke forming this amazing scene. Mm. So what do we have here? We have two lamps, our main character, and it looks like there's a swing and... Is that a child? Looking at our main character? I... Yes, this is also the first child our main character has encountered. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now our raven has kind of three languages, three concepts to communicate with. He almost looks like he's leaning down and showing the cage. And these are like... I, I love how these elements are growing from the cage and actually going to speed bubbles. It's amazing. But the child looks a bit confused. Oh. Okay, so it looks like they're offering the toy for the raven. Is that not a similar language? Is that a language of playing? Because I don't see any speech bubble here. Yeah, there are in, you know, speech bubbles here, but he clearly still is interested in this toy. <laughs> also, it's kind of sweet how different they look like. And now that I begin to think about this, all the creatures we have encountered have been human people and we are a raven. So, this is symbolism, I guess, right there. <laughs> and now he's holding the toy and the wind is making it go around. I wonder if I can make it go faster? No. And also, oh, I run out of arrows? Is this it? This is a new kind of concept of communicating. There's no other buttons I can press, so let's go with the arrow pointing to the left. Oh, it's, it's continuing. Okay. So now we are holding the stone. I wonder what happens if I go here. Okay, it's just the previous image we saw. So we are holding a stone. Did we take it out from our cage? Wait. Wait, what? So we took it out from our cage and the shell turned into a stone? Wow. What? Oh, what happened? Let's see. Or, or was the stone the toy we were given? Because now we have the stone in our cage. The previous picture we didn't. The little girl is stone, clearly. Hmm. He doesn't look shaken by any of that. He's just... He just turned around and is walking away. Does this happen often? And we continue our journey. The sky ain't blue anymore. <gasps> oh, 
Oh snap! Is they, uh, our raven looks like they are trying to talk to the stone with the language they learned from the elderly person who taught them. But it looks like they are not receiving any answer. Wait, now the water has lost its color. Oh, and the trees have lost its color too. So, the people we encountered are turning to stone and our environment is losing its color. And the same happens here with this guy. Oh. oh, and now everything has lost its color. And it kind of is black and white, like our main character is. Okay. Oh, he looks like he's devastated. Also, Somehow it looks like the weight of the cage is heavy on his hands. Let's see what happens next. Oh, and the same happened here. Oh. Oh boy. And now the outside and the inside of the home are looking the same. And again, we have the, oh, yeah, we have no color here, none whatsoever, except on inside the cage. So we return to the same uh, position where we began. He looks like he's looking at the cage. Oh, oh no. So now what he collected is gone too, what he tried to learn and hold on to. I guess that's our game. Oh, such a sad story. Wow. So that was a Raven monologue. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Uh, what a sad, beautiful and meaningful story. Uh, I really love the artistic choices, playing with the colors and textures, the symbolism used, the ways how their communication and languages were portrayed. That was amazing. Um, I did play this game again after finishing this playthrough. So once you have played it, uh, you get to experience the same story again, but this time each character we encounter is a stone and just like before we will lose everything colorful we have gathered in our cage in the end precisely like in the first story so our raven ends up being alone in his black and white home staring at his cage which has only one stone perhaps his heart perhaps his language Perhaps something else inside it. But somehow I believe it, things are more complicated than that though. I mean, we see the raven holding all these concepts uh, in a closed cage. Almost like some sort of a collector. Uh, and the cage is held outside 
our main character, whilst other characters have the colors and language, languages uh, both inside and outside them. In a, and those uh, elements are free, they are natural, they are colorful, they are not caged, for sure. So, <laughs> what seems to change everything is when our main character meets a child in the forest, uh, and the child has another kind of language, a pinwheel moved by the wind. Oh, <laughs> so, so many layers. And I love it. <laughs> anyway, it, it would be really nice to hear your thoughts about this game. I mean, have you played it? What kind of symbolisms you found from the story? What elements you enjoyed? I'm very glad I played this and happy that you experienced it via this video. And really, uh, thank you so much for sharing this small adventure with me. I hope you are doing well. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Bye you all!